that is my very well-worn RTS 3000 auto restoration rotisserie. And those are every bracket that I could possibly get my hands on that would allow you to mount a classic car such as my 67 Nova to an auto restoration rotisserie. And since at Redline we sell about five to 600 rotisseries per year, we get a lot of customers that wanna know, can they mount their car to a rotisserie? What brackets are they gonna have to make or buy to be able to get the job done? And since we get those questions so commonly, I wanted to make this video for you guys and hopefully put all of those questions to rest. Wish me luck. Now before we talk about all of those brackets that are available to you guys to mount your car to your rotisserie, I want to first address the two most common questions that we get at Redline, which the first one is always, will my car or truck fit onto a rotisserie and can it be spun around? And I want to start by saying that unless we're talking about something crazy like a dually that still has the fender flares on it, a sprinter van that you can stand up inside, there is no such thing as a regular car or truck that geometrically will not fit onto one of those things and you know can't be rotated all the way upside down we have never seen a car or truck that could not be mounted to a rotisserie that's even going to include include crazy stuff like a super long super wide cadillac from the 70s if it's a regular car or truck it will absolutely fit the second most common question that we get as customers are starting this process is which rotisserie is right for my car? And if we're being totally honest, it's not really an applicable question. It's not about which rotisserie is best for your car because at the end of the day, all the rotisseries have a mounting arm that extends out from both ends and hooks up to the car. And so all of the rotisseries that we carry are going to hook up to your car in the exact same fashion. So it's not about which rotisserie is is best for your car as it is which rotisserie is best for you that's going to be dependent upon things like you know are you looking for super high-end american-made quality with the price tag that goes with it what features are important to you on that rotisserie that's how you're going to select which rotisserie you want it's not about which one fits your car best they all fit your car just fine the first type of bracket that I want to address with you guys are leaf spring brackets. Now, leaf spring brackets come in a variety of offsets from a short offset to a medium offset all the way to a really, really long offset bracket. And you can get these things in lots of different variations. You can see that I've got all of auto twirler sizes there, as well as some red line units that you see in black right there. Now, all of those brackets, all they really do in terms of the different size of the offset is they determine where does your mounting arm connect to the car, vertically speaking. So if you've got this mounting arm and it's gonna come into the back of the car and it's gonna connect to it, uh, the more offset that you have, the the further down that bracket is going to mount to the car. I personally prefer a leaf spring bracket with a large amount of offset versus a short. And the reason for that is maybe with a short difference, the arm comes right up in there just like that, very close to the car. And as you increase that offset and that arm comes down, you start gaining space. The reason that I like gaining space in these situations is because it spaces that arm away from the vehicle. And all of a sudden it gives you more room room in there to be able to weld, media blast, prime paint, whatever it's going to be. So I personally prefer a bracket that has a larger amount of offset. Now if you run off and you buy some brackets that have too much offset and you can't get the car balanced, sure it is possible that you have to go back and either modify that bracket and you know drill the holes up higher. You know, Say for instance here that you bought this bracket and you had too much offset. There's nothing stopping you from cutting off some of the end of those tabs and drilling a hole up closer toward my hand and sometimes you might have to do that if you're having trouble getting the car balanced but that's the basic gist of leaf spring brackets they come in different offsets I would err on the side of more offset now there's one more thing that I want to add to this discussion of leaf spring brackets. This is one of our standard set of leaf spring brackets that comes with the four piece adapter kit that we sell at Redline. But we also sell some other pieces in that four piece kit, such as this piece, which I like to call a standoff bracket. And we'll get to why I call it a standoff bracket here in a bit. Uh, that four piece kit is also going to come with a set of mounting tabs. Comes with four of these and two of those standoff brackets. There's absolutely nothing stopping you from 
Frankensteining, there we go, your own bracket that you can see right there, uh, you know, with however much offset your heart desires. And you can see I'm just kind of using a, uh, uh, a C clamp there to show you what I'm talking about. But there's nothing stopping you from building whatever you need with that kit to get what you want. So just be aware of that. And since we just talked about leaf spring brackets, here's a photo of a Jeep Wrangler that is utilizing a set of these things. You can zoom in and see that you're just utilizing the leaf spring shackle bolt to hold the bracket to it. Earlier, I mentioned these brackets that I personally like to call standoff brackets. And I want to show you just briefly how I decided to use them on my car. There's a lot of ways that you can use those. They're terribly universal. Here's how I did it. I actually cut them short on mine, and then I made a bracket that you can see right there, and I welded that bracket, there we go, to my standoff bracket. And let me sh go over here to the car, and I'll show you exactly what I did. You don't have to go this far, but, you know, you know, my brother says I like to do everything the hard way, so I'll show you how I did it. First, I took a set of threaded bungs and welded them into my frame rail. So if you look right there and you look right there, you'll see that I've got permanently threaded bosses welded into my frame rail that allow my brackets to attach. If we come over here to the other side of the car where I've now put that bracket into place, you can see there's bolts up in there that hold it in place. And at the end of the day, all I'm trying to do here is to bring this rotisserie arm down vertically so I create all of this space. The reason that's particularly important is because now I can put this car on the rotisserie and I can still have the rear bumper in place. That's particularly handy when you're trying to do something like maybe narrowing your rear bumpers right there and you know you're trying to rotate the car and do all of this work and if your rotisserie arm comes in way up here all of a sudden you don't have the space to be able to have the bumper on the car so I used a set of standoff brackets and just brought the whole assembly down did my own custom mount in the frame. That's one way you can skin that cat. You can see in these photos here supplied to us from a customer with a first generation Camaro, he's accomplishing the exact same thing using the same brackets as I did. Next up, let's talk about unibody brackets. This is a really simple bracket that's just a plate welded to a piece of square tubing. You drill your holes where you need them to ultimately mount up to the vertical mounting surface on the car. They're technically intended to be used on the front of the car where the front subframe meets the car. You can see in this photo here of my 67 Nova where it was being used you know, long before I built the custom frame and all of that. It just bolts right up essentially to the firewall. However, I have also seen folks use these things in the back of the car you can see here as well as this shot right here where people are using unibody brackets in the back of the car to hook up to the tail section at the end of the day the idea behind a unibody bracket is you remove your front subframe you're left with the frame that's actually attached to the car you know on a unibody car the frame and the body are the same thing and then you essentially just have a mounting plate right there you drill a few holes you mount the unibody bracket up to it that's how those things operate. Super simple. They can be used in more than one way. Now I want to shift our attention to some Mopar specific brackets. That is a Mopar front bracket. But before you click away, just know that these things, again, are terribly universal. There's nothing stopping me from using a set of Mopar front brackets here on my Nova. If I wanted to drill a couple of holes right there, you know, and use that, uh, there we go, use that front Mopar bracket on a non-Mopar car, there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing so. I will let you know these things do not fit 74, uh, 73 and 74 model B body. So just make sure before you order a set of these things that they're going to fit your car. That right there is how it mounts right up. You can see in this shot uh, on the front of this car how they're used. All right, the next bracket that I have to show you is so large I need my tripod. This is the Mopar B-body rear bracket. You can see how it is used in this shot right here. And you know, I really tend to think of this thing as really like a glorified long reach leaf spring bracket. Suppose for a minute that you were to take this tab down here on the end and just completely cut that off, you would basically be left with a great big leaf spring bracket that extends outward. And so as a result, if you wanted to, you could take your rotisserie arm, connect the two, and then extend your rotisserie arm and leaf spring bracket way out. So these things are available to you if you need to use them, even if you don't have a Mopar B-body car. 
The last bracket that I have to show you is an auto twirler A body rear bracket. So basically all you do on an A body Mopar is remove the rear bumper and the bolts that would normally hold the bumper into place are gonna take the place of that bracket right there and basically just hook your rotisserie right up to the back of your A body Mopar. I have absolutely zero doubt that there are plenty of folks out there that are using that bracket right there in all sorts of non Mopar applications. It's just a terribly universal bracket with elongated hole you do the math I'm sure you could use this thing on tons of different cars since I just mentioned that this is kind of just a glorified extended leaf spring bracket I want to show you something as well there's absolutely nothing stopping you from using a method to extend your rotisserie's mounting arm here's a photo where a gentleman slides a piece of tubing up inside of his mounting arm in order to extend this thing out here's a photo of a gentleman who slides a piece of tubing over his mounting arm and at the end of the day those guys are accomplishing the same thing they're just making this arm longer to gain the clearance that they need there's absolutely nothing stopping you from doing that one of the final things that I want to say about mounting your car to a rotisserie is you should really inspect your car before you run off and order adapters. Make sure that you're actually going to need those things because not all cars actually need adapters. If you'll have a look at this picture of a customer's 55 Chevrolet, you'll notice that he was able to mount his rotisserie to that car to the front and to the rear and he didn't use any brackets at all. In fact, he just used a few washers to act as spacers and he didn't need to buy any brackets. Maybe you don't either. This is probably more common than you might think that people don't actually need adapters. Here's a picture of a customer's Mustang where he's just drilled a couple of holes in his rotisserie's mounting arms and he's bolting it right up to the front of the car without anything necessary. Here's another customer's picture and again here is another customer's picture where they're just bolting their rotisserie right up to the subframe mounts on the front of the car and they're not building or buying anything. Okay guys, so this is the problem you're ultimately trying to solve at the end of the day. Basically what you've got are two arms on each end that is two inch square tubing that come out and you have to figure out how to make those four arms connect to that car. I will mention that the only rotisserie that I'm aware of that doesn't use a two inch square tubing mounting arm is the Carnell CR3000 which is like a blue and gray rotisserie. All the other rotisseries that we carry, the Redline, Titan, Auto Twirler, all of them use a two inch mounting arm, that's the problem you're trying to solve. Do you remember in the beginning of this video that I told you essentially any car, any truck can be mounted to an auto restoration rotisserie? I want to prove that to you right now. Have a look at this photo that this customer sent us where he's mounted this van truck looking thing to one of our rotisseries. You'll notice that his hydraulic jacks are fully compressed. He could easily raise that thing a foot with no problem and to begin to rotate that entire vehicle on our rotisserie. You can put anything on one of these rotisseries. Hell, you can even put a boat on it. I'm going to put a link down below in the description where you're going to find all of the rotisseries, all of the adapters, the rotisserie accessories like air assisted cylinders, uh, door braces, you name it, all of that stuff down below in the description. I will say there are two adapters that I did not bother to have on hand for this video, which is the Auto Twirler Truck Cab Adapter Kit as well as the Auto Twirler Corvette Subframe Adapter. Uh, those are big items that do not sell very well, and so I just wanted to let you know that those things do exist should you need one. And again, link below, you'll find them in the description. Okay, folks, that has been the lowdown on every rotisserie adapter that I could possibly get my hands on. I hope I have given you guys kind of a heads up uh, of what is going to be required to mount your project to a restoration rotisserie. If you're finding this content helpful and you want to follow along, I would ask that you please, you know, uh, click subscribe down below, click the thumbs up, turn on notifications. If you've got questions, by all means, please ask them down below in the comments. I very commonly answer folks' questions. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I appreciate you guys following along very, very much. Y'all have a great afternoon. Take care.